What the f is this piece of sh Subnautica is a large open world. Luckily, the developers decided to add vehicles to allow you to traverse the vast ocean much more efficiently. There are a total of three vehicles in the game, each designed for a specific purpose. The Seamoth is a swift miniature vehicle, which can be used to outmaneuver hostile creatures. The Cyclops is an underwater RV that gets stuck in every fucking crevice you stick it in, and the Piranha suit is mostly useless if you don't have grapple arms on it. Regardless, every Subnautica player has made these vehicles at least once in their playthroughs. Without them, the game wouldn't be the same. Or would it? I'm willing to bet these vehicles are not an asset, but a liability. Today we'll be testing our hypothesis. Is Subnautica easier without vehicles? We begin inside a life pod. Our ship has had a run-in with a massive space iceberg and now it's sinking into the atmosphere of planet 4546b. Fortunately, we managed to push our way through hordes of women and children, and now we're the only ones alive. And even if we aren't, I have a way to deal with that. But quick question, do you notice anything peculiar about this life pod? It has no parachute, only floaties. What would happen if the planet wasn't comprised of 99% water? What would happen if we landed on a desert? Are there two types of life pods? Are you telling me I could have died? Relax. Remember, we're here to test the hypothesis not get into the legalities of Altera's safety procedures. As many of you slow fucks out there would have guessed by now, the early game does not change that much. Like a normal Subnautica playthrough, you go around collecting resources, crafting things, getting bit in the ass, until you swim out further and further and get a taste of this. Yeah, fun fact, there's actually more biomes in the game. And they get deeper. And darker. I'm not gonna bore you to death with the early game because this isn't some sort of gay ass let's play. So instead, here's a summary. I went ahead and unlocked the basic items, that being the sea glide, habitat builder, and a larger oxygen tank, and then watched the sunrise on this beautiful day. It's at this point most players would try to seek out the sea moth fragments, but not me. So what do we do next? Usually, you'd grind for the sea moth, get the sea moth, and while doing so, the aurora would have exploded, at which point you can go over there and grab some fragments for the cyclops, then grind for more resources for the cyclops. But we're not doing that. But let's say we did. What would we do next? Go over to the islands. There are two islands in Subnautica, the floating island and the gun island. The floating island is essentially useless, unless you care about some decorative blueprints and a story. So we'll go over to the gun island. I say hello to the reaper who is having a fun time being an asshole and make my way into the facility. Right here you can see me getting my hourly intake of heroin from this machine. Please, I need more. <coughs> okay, back to the task at hand. It's at this point we get some insight into what's really going on on this hair floating water rock. You see, there's a virus going around. Its symptoms include the ability to make you grow brussels sprouts on your hands, a mild cough, and death. That's not good. This facility is actually a weapon that prevents ships from entering and leaving the planet. The planet is therefore under quarantine so the virus doesn't spread any further. We need to find a way to cure the planet. To do so, you need to go down into the Mariana Trench, say hello to Godzilla, go into this facility, become a father, crack open these eggs so we can make an omelette, and touch some alien shit to get that green shit off our hands. As you might have realized, there are two obstacles we will face on this journey, one being the fact that our oxygen is limited, and the second being that there are literal alien monsters the size of my cock guarding this facility. Does that mean we're screwed? Well, you never know until you try. So here we go. First, we need to get down into the Lost River. To do this, you need to venture deep into the ocean down into a network of caves. It's at this point I would advise anyone with thalassophobia to close the game and play Fortnite instead. But for those of us who are proud, fearless 13 year olds, there are various entrances to said Lost River. The one we'll be using is right off the coast of the Gun Island. Right around here, there's a little hole that goes deep into your greatest nightmares. Now some of you might be thinking, You can't go so deep in a diving suit, it's dangerous. Well, I beg to differ. Diving suits don't matter in Subnautica. Pressure doesn't exist, and therefore, we'll be just fine. But what about oxygen? How are you going to get oxygen? You need to breathe. Come here, come here. Let me show you something. Now gather around, you dumb fucks, and let me insert some knowledge into that empty skull of yours. Do you see this? That's an oxygen tank. Did you know that you can carry multiple oxygen tanks? Carrying multiple oxygen tanks allows us to cycle through when one becomes empty. Normally, three oxygen tanks might not seem like that much, 
but that's because people are usually accustomed to passing through the other entrances to get to the Lost River. The problem is those entrances have a significantly longer path. This particular entrance is much shorter and is the reason why I'm able to do this so easily. But oxygen is not our only issue. This is. As I mentioned before, leviathans roam the depths, guarding the entrance to our final objective. But as you'll recall in the popular film Jurassic Park, dinosaurs cannot see you if you stand completely still. So we'll be safe if we don't move, right? Of course not. Does that look like a fucking dinosaur to you? The smartest way to get past these beasts is to swim as quickly and as close to the edge as possible, making sure not to turn around, and maybe, just maybe, you'll make it out alive. From here we can swim down into Satan's asshole, where we see that this ugly pile of shit is guarding the entrance to the lava castle. Luckily he doesn't seem to mind and he lets us right on in. Good lad. I'm willing to bet if we did this with a cyclops we'd be dead within seconds. Let that sink in. And look at that, we're in the first facility. It's here we'll get our hands on the blue tablet, as well as the crafting recipe for said blue tablet. Around now you may have realized that we're very close to the endgame, and I've only been playing the game for about 40 minutes. Now I know this might come as a blow to your self esteem, seeing as a typical Subnautica playthrough can last anywhere from 8 hours to 800 hours, depending on how scared you are of the ocean. But don't worry, because this isn't your fault. I have been studying Subnautica for the past 20 years. While you were sucking on that juice box in 5th grade, I was cracking the biggest conspiracy in gaming history, and I've uncovered a dark secret. It's called the Vehicle Upgrade Trap. Do you remember when I said a normal player would make the sea moth and then gather the blueprints and materials for the cyclops? Well it turns out there's more than meets the eye. Let's say you did build a cyclops. What then? You'd want to explore right? Go deeper down? See what this world has in store? But that's just it. The world. The map. Look very closely. This is a map of where all leviathans are located. Do you realize something odd? Whenever a player tries to explore this beautiful ecosystem in their submarine, they are greeted with one of these unruly bastards. Thus, they end up retreating and building a base like some sort of bitch. Building the moon pool, which docks the sea moth, but also docks some upgrades. More grinding. Might as well upgrade the cyclops too. Explore the aurora. Prawn suit, more upgrades, there go all your hours. As you can see, Subnautica has caught you all in a trap of endless grinding. Crafting all these vehicles for what? To increase CO2 emissions? Greta Thunberg would not be impressed. This isn't fun, you've been brainwashed, but that's why I've been sent by God himself to spread my vast library of knowledge. No like the goddamn video. Anyways, from here we can just waltz on into the primary containment facility. For some reason, this old bitch loves wasting my time, but once she's done, we can take the portal back to the gun island and gather the remaining resources for the hatching enzymes. Now, if you wanted to be a bit quicker, you could have gathered these along the way, but as you can see, I'm pretty stupid, so I didn't do that. Using my vast knowledge, I located every ingredient to make my suspicious stew, but on my way back, I ended up having a fatal encounter. As we can see here, unknown worlds themselves do not appreciate that I've been exposing their secrets and breaking their game, so they send their security team to wipe me from existence. I was not having it by any means, so I charged at this piece of shit to show him who's boss. Good thing items don't despawn. I made the enzyme and hatched the sea emperor eggs. We were essentially done ladies and gentlemen. We had beaten Subnautica in about an hour, and it was all thanks to the fact that we didn't craft any vehicles. But wait, the rocket ship. We still needed to escape the planet, but we couldn't. Because the rocket is a vehicle. Now you might think we're screwed. We can't exit the planet. We can't end the game without using a vehicle. You idiot, you didn't think about the ending. Shut up, I thought of everything. There exist other methods of transportation in the game. Developers of unknown worlds who defected from the dark side left a hidden secret for those of us who discovered the truth. If home is what you truly desire, then home you shall go.